Hello again everybody, it's Johnny Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today we're going to cover D-aspartic acid. Uh, it's kind of the latest and greatest ingredient, I guess you'd say, um, used to increase testosterone. Um, specifically what it is, is it's an amino acid. Um, it's different than the typical amino acids we see. We're used to seeing L for the uh, prefix for the amino acid. And L and D just refers to the uh, isotopes of the, uh, or I'm sorry, isomers of the, of the uh, amino acids. Specifically, our bodies are using the L amino acids for, you know, building tissue, and that's what you're finding in all your proteins. Mm -hmm. um, D, you'll see it here and there, like in this case, where there'll be some specific effects of an amino acid, uh, like sugars, for instance. There's L and Ds. Well, we, our body uses D sugars, not L sugars. So, um, this is the D form of aspartic acid, and I want to talk about some of the effects that have been found in some of the research. Yeah, like so essentially, it has been shown to increase testosterone in humans. There was human studies done. Uh, at a gram, or excuse me, a three gram dosage per day, or 3,000 milligrams. Uh, it was only studied though for 12 days. Uh, after 12 days, they had an increase in testosterone of about 33%, uh, which is good, it could be significant. Um, and after 12 days, they went off for 12 days, and then they went back on. So it was sort of a 12 on, 12 off, 12 on, 12 off. Um, the way it works is, what it does is it increases your uh, conversion of cholesterol into testosterone. Now, uh, cholesterol and testosterone are essentially the same thing, they have the same backbone. Um, and your body does convert cholesterol into, into testosterone, but this increases that, so you have more testosterone circulating in your body. Now, are there any other studies out there that have been done in humans, or is this a relatively recent it's one? It's relatively recent. Um, I imagine there are some, uh, well, there was some studies back done back in the 90s on, on uh, animals and things like that. Um, I, I imagine there is going to be some more human studies done on it. Um, so yeah, it, it is a very, very hot item right now, very popular. Now some of the questions we're getting is being that it's a free form amino acid, should people take it on an empty stomach? You know, I know most of these products are going to have instructions on the bottles. Um, I know some people have said to take it with food, others have said without. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just curious how detailed we'd have to yeah. see what some of the future research comes out. See, that's sometimes the problem when you're only dealing with one study is a lot of the questions and stuff that we have. There's just so many variables that we need to sort out and figure out over time. Um, but these, we've got in front of us some of the popular forms of it. Um, a powdered version here from Omega Sports. So like Glenn said, you got to take three grams. So um, this particular one, there's 33 servings. So you're looking at a little more than a month's supply. And now this one is a liquid form. Now this is uh, a little bit different form, correct? This is a sodium stabilized form of it, I assume. Yes. It's something like yes. kind of salt with it. So, okay. And this is a liquid. It comes with a little you know, a syringe type thing, which I, I guess is more for effect that, you know, you can suck it in, you're, you're squirting it into your mouth, so it's not a syringe per se, it's just another way to uh, take it, and this is a, a liquid. And then another powder here, Prima Force, the deaspartic acid, again, 33 servings, um, based on a three gram scoop, so you have one supply. And then this one here, this is the newest one that we have, I believe. Now this is a little bit different. This is a methyl form. It's got a methyl attachment. Yeah, N-methyl diaspartic. It, it does have the original diaspartic acid, and then it has the N-methyl variety. Yep. And I imagine that's there to just help with the absorption or bioavailability of it. Uh, maybe an alternative to the sodium-stable version. I um, mean, yeah, it looks like there's a few other ingredients in here. It's, it's a proprietary blend, so we can't quite make out exactly what's in here. But there's some other herbs in here that you'll see in some of the you know, testosterone boosting products. There's a little bit of zinc and magnesium. I guess almost kind of going for that ZMA effect, but not in that same ratio that you'll see um, the, the patented form. So, and uh, a couple other ingredients in here. So this is a little bit different. Now this is capsules too. So, you know, recommended dosage on this one is they want you to take two to three capsules, two to three times per day. So if you're taking, you know, three a day, 90 capsules, it's about a month's supply. Um, right now, I mean, what's the most popular for us? Is it the powder or the capsules? And, you know, it's actually sort of a toss-up between the powder and the capsules. Or, it's not, I'm sorry, not capsules, powder and liquid. Okay. Uh, this is a very popular, and then the, the powder also. People with the powder just mix it with water, or you can probably mix it with a protein shake. Um, these products do say take with or without meals. So, like John was saying, we don't know which is the better way to go or route to go because it's so new and the studies are so new. Being a free-form amino acid, I tend to think on an empty stomach. I think so, too. Um, just because you don't want any competitive inhibition because in the presence of other peptides, you know, i.e. protein, free-form amino acids tend not to absorb as well. Um, now, another question we get is, can people use this as a PCT, as we've been in another it, video? It can be. It can be. Um, it may not be uh, as strong as needed, like if you're taking an actual steroid or if you're taking a, a prolonged uh, pro-hormone cycle, um, you may need some other ancillary ingredients or items, but uh, it can be used as a PCT. 
Okay, so overall, I mean, it's nice to see that there's e some human research on this, and, and it looks pretty positive. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some more studies out. You know, as those come out, we'll definitely keep an eye out for them, and we can do a, a follow-up review. So, for those of you who are uh, comfortable with that, that study to go off of, you know, being that it was positive, it certainly uh, may be worth a shot for you. So, if you have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the blog or in the comments of the video. We're happy to answer them for you. Thank you.